you guys I'm Eric and welcome back to my channel no you grow up so today's video will be the third and final opening video I'll be doing for a while and it's kind of my wrap up to all the holothon figures so I usually have the figures sitting right next to me in these videos but for this one I'm just gonna open them up on my desk I didn't really feel like breaking out that table for this one so we'll be taking a look at Bebop and Rocksteady's gang and these were the last two sets that I needed from holothon I saw someone in a group post that NECA had figures at Best Buy there was also some Super 7 figures there which is weird because they have them without like the slip cover on it apparently they just threw them right in the trash probably not the best place to get your Super 7 figures but pretty good place to get Mirage figures if you're having trouble finding them and this was like the last of the figures that I needed from that first drop of Mirage figures as well so once I actually do get the Triceraton and those other two shredders I will be pretty much caught up on that line as well I know Walmart put out that like battle damage shredder and foot soldier but nobody really knows what's going on with those right now I don't know if they got put up at collector con again or not and we give Target a lot of shit but let's be real Walmart is far and away the worst as far as exclusives are concerned finally got a couple of those auto tea tags hanging on my shelf in my Walmart though now but enough talk Talking. let's get these guys out of package and take a look at them all right you guys so i'm pretty sure in the intro i didn't even actually say i was gonna review the utram i just showed him so i don't know what the hell i was thinking there but yeah he's part of this as well and as weird as it sounds he's probably my favorite figure out of all these so i'm gonna save him for last so that way i can end on a high note so i'm definitely gonna have a few nitpicks with these figures this has been a very hit or miss wave of figures from NECA. i definitely have a few gripes with a couple of these figures but we will start off with the figure that i am absolutely the least excited about out of all the figures that were just released the only figure figure I care less about than Chakahachi and it's Jersey Red. So I'm pretty sure Jersey Red is only in one episode and it's an episode where they go back and re-meet Bebop and Rocksteady's gang even though it's a totally different gang so technically she's not even a part of the gang for all the figures that just came out. That's why she doesn't have like the alternate mutant form because she wasn't even in the first season. I don't know if Bebop and Rocksteady were in a couple gangs, if the gang that they were in the beginning wasn't really a gang but maybe just a bunch of recruits that Shredder brought in. So as we start to take a look at her the main thing I kind of want to point out for a QC issue, she kind of has that issue that some of the figures from last year had where their lines just aren't as sharp as they should be on the top. And when you're doing those heavy black outlines, they really need to be on point or they just look really, really shitty. And that's kind of how hers is. It's kind of faded and comes down a little bit. The area behind her ears is kind of weird. And then I don't know if I can get it on camera here, but... The way her eyelashes are, they aren't painted, so it looks like she just kind of has skin tags on her eyelids, which is kind of weird. And one of the first things I noticed when I took her out is her forearm just seems a little bit small for her upper arm. Like, that connection just doesn't look good there. There's a lot of gap there, and I'm like, hmm, that seems kind of weird for NECA. It's the same exact arm from the short gangster. Shit. So I just dropped Jersey Red and it moved my camera, so sorry if it's on a different angle now. But as you can see, her upper arms are the same exact mold as the short gangsters. So yeah, interesting area to decide to cheap out on on these because, I mean, yeah, again, it's a figure we don't really care about. I'm sure there's somebody out there that's like, yeah, so I'm stoked I got Jersey Red, but I'm definitely just not that person. But still, just kind of a weird choice that they didn't tool that upper arm when they tooled everything else for her. Everything else on her is a completely brand new and unique mold so yeah really weird that that's the route they decided to go there and i know i sound really nitpicky here and it's because it's like i said it's just not really a character that i care about so there's not really like a lot of bias shining through so the first things i do see with her is the issues so since i already had them out we'll take a look at short gangster here and something in common with the last two figures i just showed other than their upper arms is they're just very very plain figures and i know it's just inherent of the design but he just has a gray shirt black vest blue jeans little wrist gauntlets and again not very well painted right there but I mean I don't know why he's probably my favorite out of the four tune figures that I have right here I just like that he's a way different size and dimension than all the other figures I feel like all the human male characters are just really tall and lean they all kind of share like the same body and he's just way different so I do like having him for just a little bit more variety than we had with the other figures and then other than a little bit of the bad line work that he has like I don't really have a lot of problems with him so we'll take a look at tall thug here next first time I saw this figure the first thing I thought is the guy that plays Kramer on Jerry's pilot on Seinfeld. I'm gonna try to find a picture of him to put up with this so you can know what I'm talking about, but I feel like he looks exactly like that guy. We really are into like the F tier of figures now, and I know there's still like a ton of B and C tier characters left, but I am just happy that we're getting these guys to round everything out. And putting them all out together just made it seem a little bit more worthwhile to get these guys. I'm someone that's all in anyway, so I'm gonna get whatever they throw at me probably until we get to the Red Sky seasons. But yeah, him in his human form, pretty good figure. When we get to his alternate form, that's that's kind of a different story. All right, so Grunt is the figure that I have the most questions about. So all the other figures in the gang, even if you throw in like Scrag, 
Bebop and Rocksteady, they look just kind of like punks. This dude looks like he was pulled right from fucking Thunderdome. Like, what is this guy wearing? What is this, like, chest armor that he has on? Like, could you imagine if you just saw a guy walking down the street like this? I don't know, his, his design just baffles me so much. I feel like he's just so much different than all the other figures in the gang. Even in the cartoon, I'm like, why is that guy wearing that freaking X strap on his chest? Not to mention everybody else has like blunt force objects to use and he has a fucking sword too. Like this guy is just like the wild card of the gang for sure. So we'll kind of move backwards in order of their alternate forms here. So I feel like he has the coolest looking one for sure out of everybody but Scrag, Bebop, and Rocksteady. So I guess he's middle of the pack. Then. I don't know why I just said it like that. The way they gave him his head articulation is kind of interesting. You don't really see a lot of other figures like that. And his design in general is just really interesting. His torso definitely seems like a little bit scrunched. I don't know why they made it so short. Maybe it's because he's like so long here. So his proportions are kind of wonky. I think two podcasts ago, Brendan had mentioned how he doesn't come with any alternate hands, so he has no gripping hands. So an interesting thing to note is his second set of grippy hands have these sharp fingernails on them so they were definitely meant to be painted green and were meant to be the alternate hands for him so a very weird slip up for NECA I don't know if you've ever seen anything like this to where they just completely missed a paint app on something so it does look like he was meant to come with extra gripping hands but they just forgot to paint him so this guy really got screwed when it comes to the mutation department like I don't know if he was just like a mutation gone wrong if he was supposed to be like an earthworm or what the fuck he was actually supposed to be but he just looks ridiculous so yeah like i don't know his mutation just doesn't really fit with the others they're all like some sort of animal and again I, I just don't get it i don't know what he's supposed to be other than just a really 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 ugly person now with a weird fat hand all right so before i ever got this guy i thought he was a dog but upon getting him and looking at his hands like he's definitely supposed to be a sloth never knew that always thought he was a dog and i kind of like him a little bit more now that he's a sloth i mean i guess he's always been a sloth i was just the idiot but a couple huge qc issues with this guy's form so first of all they didn't do anything with the neck here, so he still has the flesh tone neck, which just really looks bad. And then second, his arms and head aren't even the same color, so what the hell happened here? Like, these are some major slip-ups by NECA, and I know NECA was known for their QC issues for a while, but that was just mostly like for their joint integrity and their cheap accessories. Yeah, they've had some bad line issues in the past, but these complete deco issues are just something we haven't really seen from them before. So yeah, I hope it's not a sign of things to come, but definitely a big bummer with these guys. So this is probably the only time these figures are ever gonna be in this form. I only have one Scrag, so I didn't get two sets to have them in multiple forms, and honestly, as a whole, I feel like the gang just looks better in human form. I really like Scrag in his alternate mutant form, but with Short Gangster alone, like, I don't know, his alternate form just looks terrible. Like, there's just way too many QC issues to not see with him. So yeah, after this review, I'm going to get him back in their human form. I'm going to get Scrag in his human form. And that's probably the way they're going to be displayed forever. So ending things on the high note here. So the Utram, like I said, is one of the last Mirage figures that I needed from kind of their first dump when they started making figures again. And that was really only because I hadn't seen him in the wild yet. If I would have saw him, I would have grabbed him. But it got to the point where I was kind of like, okay, I should, maybe I should get on BBTS and order this guy or something. But I saw some in the group say that they started finding NECA figures at Best Buy along with some Super 7 figures where they take off the sleeves and just throw them away apparently. Sure enough I went to Best Buy and there this guy was. There was a Casey and then there was a Super 7 Samurai Leo there too. But just talking about this guy, he might be one of the best comic book figures they've made so far. Especially after opening him with all these cartoon figures like this guy just has a lot of good things going on with him. Like he has a lot of of cool sculpting work, a lot of good paint apps. He feels really good, all of his joints move really good. Like he was honestly probably one of the best moving NECA figures I've ever gotten right out of the box. The Utram inside of him comes out, which is pretty cool. So he doesn't look too terrible when he's on the ground. But I don't know, maybe he just seems a lot smaller than I think he would be. So this was kind of a sleeper figure for me. Like I was excited to get him, but I wasn't really expecting much. And like I said, this is probably one of the best NECA figures, I think. I wasn't going to army build these guys, but honestly, I think I might get one or two more now. Really happy with this guy. He does come with this alternate battle damaged head, which is really cool too. And yeah, just very, very, very happy with this guy. He was a nice surprise, and I'm glad I got him. I think I'm going to do a video where I just kind of recap all my final thoughts on this season of Holothon. I definitely have a lot of things to say, just kind of about where the line is right now, where it's going. So that'll probably be out here in the next couple weeks. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. I know I said I was going to do the storage shell turtles in this video but after i got the utram and then just thought about the fact that three of these figures have two forms i felt like that was plenty enough for one video so thank you to all my subscribers
subscribers. Thank you guys for sticking around. Thank you for liking, commenting. Like, it really just is awesome that so many of you guys have my back and just say so many positive things to me. So I know I say thank you guys a lot, but just one more time, thank you. Take it easy, be safe, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.